Let's look at a resultant force problem with vectors. Here's how I've got a diagram. This is a top view of a situation where I've got an object A, um, I don't think of it as a person maybe, um, being tugged in two different directions. So there's maybe by ropes. There's two ropes pulling on the same object and the forces are as indicated. So one force is pulling this way, let's say if it's a top view that's northeast and this one is northwest. And specifically, force one is five newtons. Got it up here, the five. And that's the magnitude of that force. And it's going in direction 28.47 degrees, just to be kind of random. And the other one is four newtons. It's going in direction 150.72 degrees. Remember these directions, if we're going to use vector technology without having to mess with our standard formulas, we want those to always be measured from the positive x-axis in our picture. So the question that you get in the book, for example, would be what is the resultant force on the object? So fairly quickly, I want to talk just a, briefly about what does that mean, resultant force? It's something that's really deep. It's the fact, it's a physical fact, and you really, you can't really convince anybody of this really, except by doing experiments. It's that if I have an object and two different forces act on it, it will behave exactly as if there's only one force on it that's the vector sum of these two forces. It's a deep physical fact about our universe. Um, you shouldn't take that on faith, but I'm kind of asking you to because we're not doing the experiments in our class. So um, it's a cool fact that the mathematics that describes how you add, for example, displacements, meaning like legs of a journey or velocities, um, also correspond to how forces add up. And it's it's not something that I think you can assume about about any universe that could could ever exist. So it's uh, it's a cool fact. And so what this really means, results in force, just means what's the vector sum of the two given forces. And the cool thing is that's our absolute most standard vector problem. Um, and how how do we do it? Well, the unfortunate thing, of course, is that given this information, this is magnitude and direction information. This is magnitude and direction information, like here. Um, that's not convenient numbers to do the vector sum, but we know how to fix that. We know that step one of this kind of problem is convert to components. Step two is add in components, and the whole point is that that is easy. And step three is convert back. A few problems uh, don't force you to convert back and allow you to answer in component form, which is a nice break. But it's better to really think about, hey, if somebody gave us this information, or if you gave yourself, you found out this information in magnitude and direction form, you probably want the answer in magnitude and direction form as well. Okay. And as we're doing it, really, I should say step zero is draw a picture. And so we'll, we'll build out the picture as we go. In particular, let's look at the picture of adding vectors. That's on page two here. That we make this parallelogram to join them, in other words, tip to tail. So I have F1, and here's a copy of F2, put tip to tail. And then I join the tail of the first to the tip of the second. This arrow, these kind of a lot of arrows getting kind of busy with each other here. Um, this arrow is going to be the resultant force. So it's as if one person were pulling with a rope in this direction only instead of two people pulling on those ropes. Very deep fact. Okay, but let's look at how the math works. Okay, so step one, we're going to have F1 is going to be magnitude, that magnitude, which is given, times cosine theta 1, comma, magnitude F2 sine theta 1. Nope, oh, magnitude F2, magnitude F1, there we go. Magnitude, cosine, magnitude, sine. Just right triangle trig on a circle of radius with a given, with a given radius, namely 5 here. 5, cosine, 28. Actually, let me copy that in. 28.47 degrees. And 5, sine of the same thing. Okay. I don't think it'll do it for me. Eh doesn't like to, it doesn't, it thinks I want exact answers, which is unfortunate. Okay. Uh, but I can do this. Value numerically. And it's just not smart enough to do that. Okay. There we go. And then this guy, we'll evaluate that numerically. Okay. So, and we can check that the computer is actually 
calculate that as well. 4.39, 2.38, yep. So that's equal, it came out being opposite just because the way it calculated it. 4.39 and 2.38. Um, this would round it slightly differently, but I'm going to keep with this. Okay, so that's our first step for F1. F2, extremely similar. I'm just going to actually copy, um, actually I'm going to copy all that. And it's just going to be the same deal with twos. So I'm converting that second force to magnitude and direction. Magnitude, oh, sorry, to a component form. Magnitude and direction form is great for certain things, especially for like drawing the picture, thinking about the geometry. But the one thing, or one of the things it's terrible for, is adding vectors, and that's the main thing we're trying to do here. Okay, so now let's check it. Well, actually, I'll just let Sketchpad has already calculated this for me. So it's over here on the sketch, minus 3.49 and 1.96. Okay, let's do a reality check. 4, 2, yeah, it's going over more than it goes up, because that angle is less than 45. This guy go, also goes over, but to the left more than it goes up, because that angle here, the angle like that, is more than 135. Okay, so those are both plausible. Okay, so now the easy step is that F1 plus F2. Oh, you know what? Let me boldface everything here, because I try to make a point that when you're doing this by hand, you should put arrows over all your vectors to remind yourself that these are interesting new kind of objects. And textbooks use boldface. It's hard to do that by hand, and so we use arrows. Okay. So, F1 plus F2 equals... All right, so we're going to take 4.39 minus 3.49, and that's going to be 0 0.90. And 2.38 plus 1.96 is going to be 4.34. Okay, and let's see. I'm going to move to the third page here. Okay, 0 0.90, 4.34. That's the, residu the, the resultant vector, just the sum of those two guys. So one thing I like to point out is... That, that step of adding the vectors, once you get it in component form, is the easiest part of this whole problem. No sines, no cosines. You can sometimes do it in your head, or at least with very basic math. And yet it's the deepest fact of the whole process, physically, the fact that these guys do combine in such a beautifully simple way, um, that our universe is simpler than it has any right to be. Okay, so now the problem is, that's, that's the resultant force. Let me mark that as F res bolt face okay but then i want to get the magnitude and direction well magnitude is just pythagoras i've got this arrow and i've described it by looking at by putting in a little right triangle which i didn't draw of it's going slightly to the right that's 0 0.90 and a bunch up 4.34 and i'm just doing pythagoras to that so that's just going to be 0 0.90 squared plus 4.34 squared 4.4, .4. typical thing with a, with a right triangle that's very, fairly oblong, where one number is bigger than the other, you get a magnitude that's really just a little bit bigger than that, much bigger. Our intuitions usually say it should be big, bigger than that, a little bit more different, but it really isn't. 4.43, and that's this guy up here, F res 4.43, okay? So that's how big that... Um, that vector is. That's how many Newtons effectively are acting. And one thing to note is that it's smaller than 5. That's what's going on here is that this force is primarily acting to the right. This force is primarily acting to the left. They're tending to cancel each other out. The left and right is actually pretty small. It was 0.9. And so there's a lot of cancellation. So the overall effect is actually smaller in terms of magnitude than either. Now, I'm at a final answer stage, so I should put Newtons. Um, I guess I'll let it be red. That should be in the, the units that I start out with. So that's be 4.43 newtons of force. Okay, and then the last thing is that tan theta equals y over x. That's always how we get the direction, or that's the standardized way. You can be creative if you really want to, but it's a little dangerous. Tan theta is 4.34 over 0.9. 
And so theta, now this is the most dangerous part, you could, you'd be tempted to say that it's always true that it's the inverse tangent. Remember, if this guy is going off into the left-hand quadrants, you're going to have to add 180. And that's a tricky bit. Now this guy is going to the right. The x-coordinate, what you want to look at is this x-component, rather, is an x-component of the vector. When that's positive, you won't have to fudge that with the, with the 180. Okay, so this guy... And, of course, it gives me a 2 in, two in radians, so I'll just read it off of here. It's 78.29 degrees. Answering radians wouldn't be super appropriate. Um, oh, where's the degree mark? Because the answer, the information was given radians. So just be consistent with how it's given. Okay. And let's double check that. Okay, yeah, it does look like it's mainly going up a little bit to the right because this force was both bigger and maybe, well, it was actually almost exactly symmetrical in terms of how far left or right they were going, but it was bigger. So it is being dragged a little bit to the right and mainly up, and that's why this angle is close to 90, but not quite. Okay, so there's our answer, 4.43 newtons for magnitude and 78.29 degrees. Notice the way I answered, asked the question in the start, I purposely made it ambiguous. In a test situation or in a book, they shouldn't be so ambiguous. If you say, well, just what is the resultant force, you could get away with saying, hey, um, I'm going to answer like this, and just say, hey, that's, and by the way, the units there are newtons. But it's a little, um, a bit of a cheat to do that, because we want to usually convert back to the form that the answer, that the data was given in, in terms of magnitude and direction. In books and tests, they're usually going to be, and I'm going to usually be, uh, try to be careful about that, either say, answer in component form, or what is the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Okay. Um, so, I hope it's fairly clear that this is a very is an example of our absolute standard core problem. Take two or more vectors, you want to add the vectors, but because they're given in magnitude and direction form, the first thing you do is convert to components, then you add, which is easy, and then you convert back. And you try to always have at least a halfway decent picture of it while you're doing it.